This might surprise you, but here in North America, we love big SUVs, much like this Grand Wagoneer L. But maybe you're like me and this whole Wagoneer thing's got you a little confused. Well, not only are we gonna be talking about this specific vehicle here today, but I wanna explain how it fits in to the entire Chrysler lineup. Now, James featured a Wagoneer about a year ago, so if you wanna know everything there is to know about that vehicle, take a look at that. But the regular Wagoneer and Wagoneer L are more of the consumer-grade vehicles. They compete with vehicles like the Chevrolet Tahoe or Suburban or the Ford Expedition. But if you go with the Grand Wagoneer, this is competing on the luxury scale. Vehicles like the Lincoln Navigator and Cadillac Escalade. Now here we have a Grand Wagoneer L Series 3. This is not only the longest version, but really pretty much fully loaded. There's not much more you could add to this aside from changing the paint and interior, but we've even got some extra things like the rims as well as the metal applique finish to the trim on the inside. So this vehicle is pretty much fully loaded. $148,000 for 2024. It's gone up by about $8,000 since 2023, but so has the rest of the market. Everything has gone up, especially when it comes to the luxury class vehicles. So it's not unexpected to see a price hike across the board. Now, when James featured this last, and when I drove this, it was using a V8 engine, but gone is that, and in its place is a three liter twin turbo straight six engine, producing 510 horsepower, 500 pound feet of torque, uses an eight speed automatic transmission. And this specific vehicle has the Quadra Drive two four wheel drive system with the electronic limited slip rear differential. So this is well loaded. They've replaced the V8 engine and we'll talk about the fuel economy when we hit the road, but all of the Grand Wagoneers and Wagoneers now come with a version of this engine. The regular Wagoneer has the standard output, but this one gets the high output. You get a lot more horsepower. And really, if you're gonna be driving a long wheelbase vehicle such as this, you do need it. And if you are going for that longer wheelbase, you're getting an extra 12 inches of overall length at a whopping 226.7 inches long. The wheelbase is also seven whole inches longer than the regular Wagoneer or Grand Wagoneer for a total of 130 inches. Now, if you go with the max towing package, you could get 9,450 pounds of towing with this, which is really good. I mean, if you really have a big boat or some sort of camper, you wanna put six people in this vehicle comfortably, this is the one to do it in. And because this is a Jeep, essentially, we have legendary off-road capabilities. Not with these tires, these are Pirelli Scorpion tires, these are good for performance, but we do have 10 inches of ground clearance with the Quadra Lift air suspension system. You can lower and raise the vehicle depending on what you're doing. The vehicle will automatically lower when you put it into park, so it's easier to get in and out of. Now there's a couple things I wanna talk about. Since I haven't actually featured a Grand Wagoneer before, I've never driven one of these before, so it is nice to be able to try it out. I just wanna talk about some of the design elements that come on this vehicle that I think are pretty cool. A little while ago, we featured the Grand Cherokee L. It had a very similar front end. If you take a look at that and you compare it to the Grand Wagoneer, the front profile is kind of similar, obviously this being much bigger. One detail I really do like about the front end on this vehicle comes with the headlights. They have small eyebrow style daytime running lights. Although on the Grand Cherokee, they are amber, their turn signal color, I like that. However, on that vehicle in Canada, the entire headlight system is on for the daytime running lights. It doesn't really look as nice because I assume the Grand Wagoneer is bigger and the headlights are bigger, though only those eyebrows need to be on for the daytime running lights. So I think that looks really sharp. Plus the amber lights turn on when you're using your turn signals and they have a sequential fade, which I think is also a nice elegant touch, both on the front and back of the vehicle. But another thing I really like about this is how the side steps are integrated into the vehicle. If I open up the door, or just put my hand in there, you'll see these side steps deploy. They are pretty low, so it's good to be able to get into, but they sort of integrate into where the rocker panel would be. So you'll see in a second here, they'll fold back up because I haven't had any of the doors open and it really does flushly integrate into the rest of the body panel. So I think that's just one of those nice little touches. Is it gonna get full of dirt and mud and snow especially? Sure, but it does on the Escalade, it does on the Navigator. So I'm not too worried about that. But I do like the fact that it is sort of thoughtfully designed when it came to how this integrates into the vehicle. Because look, I mean, aside from the chrome strip, you pretty much never know that the side steps were there. So nice little design detail there. I like that. I like the gold accents on the Grand Wagoneer badging. You know, you'll know that this is the best of the best because of that Grand Wagoneer badge. It's on the side, it's on the back, only on the front does it just say Wagoneer, but that's all right. You'll 
pretty much know that this is the best one as it's approaching you. But I want to take this on the road. We're going to talk about how it performs, drives, handles, everything else you need to know about it, and if you should be spending $150,000 on the Grand Wagoneer L Series 3. So first and foremost, I want to talk about the fuel efficiency because I was quite surprised when it came to this vehicle. We completed our 100 kilometer test loop. There's no eco mode or anything. It's just the automatic mode, but we completed it in 10.2 liters per 100 kilometers, which is surprising, not only because, you know, fully loaded this thing is, is huge, it's heavy. It's the long wheelbase version, but you know, most people associate having smaller engines as being less efficient because they don't quite understand how they work, right? You know, we replaced the V8 that was on here with a twin turbo inline six it's pretty fuel efficient now i didn't drive the wagoneer or grand wagoneer prior with that engine so i can't tell you how it is by comparison we also haven't done any full size suvs such as this but we are hoping to have some more data maybe by the end of the week or even into next uh, into the next quarter here on test drive there is an escalade on the press fleet and victor is actually driving the lincoln navigator this week we're planning on doing a showdown on this so if you're watching this first then you should have an opportunity later on to watch the comparison but let's talk about this vehicle because there is quite a bit to go over and especially if you are looking at this because you're curious to know what a grand wagoneer has to offer if you're like me i was always you know not confused but i just didn't really know the difference and like i said this is the luxury version the dash area here the front console setup is quite different by going with this vehicle first of all we've got that metal applique throat i think it looks really nice especially around the grand wagoneer badging on the passenger side i think it looks really cool but we've got pretty much everything you could hope for on this vehicle front seats have heat ventilation massage memory the second row also has heat and ventilation huge panoramic sunroof up top with a third panel in the rear for the third row seats there that's a manual shade but nice to have some light coming in there we've got side window sunshades we have a 23 speaker 1375 watt macintosh surround sound audio system it sounds really good and we don't usually see macintosh in vehicles they're more of a high and you know at home sort of listening experience but it is nice to see some differences there and that's really one of the biggest changes I'd say in the last 20 years when it comes to luxury cars Bose used to be kind of it or Harman Kardon but now in order to really distinguish your luxury brand from the others in the segment or in the industry you're going with these more audiophile type audio system so it is nice to see something different here and it does sound pretty good i was listening to streaming music as well as series xm both sound pretty darn good no matter what you're listening to so the inside's really nice everything's pretty much soft touch we've got leather we've got that metal applique there is quite a bit of piano black and that could get scratched up especially around all the screens here because we do have quite a few screens a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster a 12 inch uconnect screen a 10 and a quarter inch passenger display we've also got another screen below the infotainment system that's for all of your massage functions your seat functions your rear climate control everything's in there and we have the rear entertainment package there's like 75 inches of screen in this vehicle here it's incredible so all of it's integrated as well we've talked about it before chrysler's uconnect 5 system is pretty good so you know the passenger screen there can be used obviously by the passenger only but can set up things like destinations on the map set up the screens in the back if you've got kids there trying to watch movies so it's a little bit better than stopping and getting out and doing it or playing around with the infotainment the driver can just have the information they need there passenger has their own screen to be able to do their stuff so some cool things there we saw a similar setup in the grand cherokee l obviously it's running the same software but this being a much more luxury class vehicle you know it kind of shows you what the fully loaded top end would get you and it's pretty nice i do like it and it so far has worked pretty well we also have wireless apple carplay and android auto so all of those things are good to have and I have to say, I love the interior color on this. I always say anything other than black. I know the exterior is very dark, but this interior here is very fresh, very inviting. It gives this a much more airy feel when you're driving along. And it almost makes me forget about how much noise is clattering along in the back there. That's the one thing I've been very annoyed with my entire week here i thought i had figured out what the problem was and it, it does sound a little bit better right now but the second row seats can slide back and forth there's a handle underneath the seat which allows you to unlock the seat to be able to move it but 
it goes up and down, right? When you pull it up towards the seat bottom, it unlocks the seat and you can move it. But that mechanism can also be pushed down. It's, it's kind of loose. I think those are just jiggling along as I'm hitting bumps. So I actually put my camera bag on the rear behind me, which I think is the loudest, kind of putting some weight on it so maybe it won't jiggle around it's still doing it. So, you know, my wife doesn't see the annoyance with it, but I do. If you're spending $150,000 on this vehicle, something like $2,500 a month to lease it, you don't want things jiggling, right? Like this is not acceptable. So, you know, always keep in mind, this is a press vehicle. It's got 14,000 kilometers on it. We don't know who's driven it, who's uh, abused it essentially. So it might not be the same for every Grand Wagoneer but it is annoying. So I really wish that that is something that I could figure out. You know, I thought that maybe it was that, but it, it, it's clearly not because my bag is heavy enough to push it down. And even if it wasn't just resting on it would prevent it from shaking. So uh, maybe it's the other side too. I don't have two camera bags, but that's really the only negative thing I have to say about this vehicle. You know, one small thing, I know it's not much, but you know, the door closing sound, it's really more of like a click than it is a thud. And especially at this size segment, you want something that feels quality. Things like the Cadillac Escalade have soft closed doors, so you don't even need to walk the door closed. You can just kind of gently pull it and it will close itself automatically. There's nothing like that on this vehicle. So I would have liked to have seen that, especially at the Grand Wagoneer level. This is meant to be a luxury vehicle you should have soft closed doors. But aside from that, the ride and drive has been really good on this. It's smooth, you know, what you would expect from a massive vehicle such as this. And I do feel that should I have to go off-road or light off-roading, this vehicle could do it because I do have a couple, you know, rock, sand and snow modes and things like that. I can raise the suspension if I want to. I do keep it in the aerodynamic mode, which helps a little bit, you know, especially considering the fuel efficiency we were talking about. And even in town, I mean, fuel efficiency is at 15 liters per hundred kilometers right now, which is not terrible for, again, a large vehicle. I really do a lot of short distance driving when I'm in town. So yeah, I expect those numbers to go higher and it's not as bad as I was expecting. So good stuff overall. I mean, all the features that I would really want are here, all the safety tech, you know, we've got adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, 360 cameras. I've got a head up display. I mean, all of that stuff is there. The thing is though, when you're comparing these luxury vehicles, and even though we're not doing that necessarily in this video, but it's hard not to talk about things like the Escalade because it really is the class leader when it comes to full size luxury vehicles, especially American ones. That really is the gold standard. And the Escalade still will always have that street presence. The name and credibility that comes along with it is unmatched. I think that Jeep has a good chance here with the Wagoneer. You know, their sales have been pretty good and, and Wagoneer sales are three to one compared to the Grand Wagoneer. So for every three Wagoneer sold, one Grand Wagoneer will, will be sold roughly around that. So you're not going to see tons of these ones, but I do see them on the road. People are buying them. People are choosing this over things like the Escalade because a comparable Escalade without any options or anything, the absolute base entry for the premium luxury platinum trim, which gives you a lot of the same stuff that this vehicle has, is $150,000 Canadian. The entry MSRP is more than this vehicle is as tested. Same thing goes with the Lincoln Navigator. The Navigator, as you know, closely optioned as this, is about 140,000, so it's much less than the Escalade. So the Escalade is the most expensive in the segment, but people are always going to buy it. There's really never a reason why people aren't going to buy Escalade. So, you know, each brand outside of Cadillac needs to do something to attract customers, to win people over. And I think that Chrysler has done a good job with this. I like it. Would I consider this over an Escalade? I do like the looks more. I really do. I think that this has a very commanding presence on the road. It's boxy, which is exactly what you would want out of a vehicle like this. It's got pretty decent performance and it's got good fuel efficiency. So it has a lot going for it. And I do like it. I like the interior as well. I find that the seats have a lot more control on this than they do on the Escalade. And overall, I mean, I've got an interior here that really does feel special because, you know, yes, the Wagoneer is more or less the same basic setup, but it feels a little bit more premium even being in a Wagoneer. But when you get into an Escalade, even though they've got the nice screens and everything, it is kind of simple. 
And I think that at this price point and at this size segment, you need something that stands out just a little bit more. And I do think that this does it. Now I'll give you a bit of a rip here. In sport mode, it's not quick off the line, that's for sure. But it does get you up to speed pretty quick. I got no complaints. There you go. Put that back into automatic mode. I mean, you're not gonna be racing this vehicle, but that's not the point of it either. This really is meant to be a smooth, comfortable, and somewhat fuel efficient full-size SUV, and a full-size SUV with the extended wheelbase. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with this. And even the third row is pretty good as well. Take a look at some of the B-roll here. You can see that it's not just a, we kind of forgot about it, here's a couple seats and a few USB chargers. There actually was some design put into those areas back there. That area has a nice design around the vent controls and the controls to be able to recline the seat and the USB port. So thought and care definitely went into all three rows of this vehicle. So if you're looking for a passenger behemoth, then this is definitely one to consider. I have been impressed by it. You know, I, I'll, I'll tell you, I came into it thinking that we were really just going to get this to be able to compare it to the Navigator and I was going to be spending tons of money on gas to get back and forth to what I needed to do this week and I'd be you know, looking for excuses not to drive it, but I'm actually enjoying it quite a bit. So it has surprised me and that is sort of a rare thing to do. I've driven so many cars over the years that I've come to expect certain things from vehicles and when something can surprise, deliver that level of, you know, je ne sais quoi, it does genuinely impress me. So I have to say that I am enjoying this and I have enjoyed this. And yeah, I mean, I can't afford $2,500 a month for a vehicle like this, but I really would suggest looking at it if you're in the market. If you're going to be leasing a full-size SUV for two or three years, I would definitely take a look at this. There is something special about it. I like it quite a bit. But we can't do this without your support. You got to watch the videos, you got to subscribe to the channel, you got to like them, you got to share them online. All of that helps us grow, all of that helps us get more vehicles and to be able to do more content like this because we absolutely love doing it. We love sharing our opinions, we love sharing our thoughts with you. We also enjoy getting into the comments and seeing what you have to say. So make sure you let us know what you think about this vehicle as we will get back to you as soon as we can. But thanks for watching and until next time, take care.